stations, calling all stations. This is KK4CTV. My name is Charles. I'm going to be the alternate uh, net operator for tonight's uh, Carroll County Aries Incom net. This net meets every Thursday night at 8 p.m. local time on the W4FWD repeater on 146.640 megahertz with a negative offset and a 131.8 hertz subaudible tone, which is activated for this net. When checking into this net, say this is, unkey the mic to make sure you're not doubling with another station. And if you don't hear anyone else talking, proceed to give your call sign first phonetically, and then normally, along with your name, your location, and if you have any comments or announcements or traffic that you need to forward to the net operator. The purpose of this net is to provide training with information uh, as it relates to emergency communications and providing uh, assistance with communications <coughs> to various local, state, national public service agencies in addition to our civilian population in the event of an actual emergency. At this time, I am going to turn this net over to the regular net operator, KI4QLV, so he can uh, go ahead and uh, carry this thing away. So take it away, Lee. Thanks, Charles. First, I'd like to say, any time during the net, if, is there, if there's any emergency or priority traffic, key up and say break twice, it's a break break, and the frequency will be turned over to you for the duration of the emergency. Now, is there any priority or emergency traffic? Please come now. Is there any routine NTS traffic to be passed? Please come now. Hearing none, is there any mobile or portable station? Please come now. This is. This is. 
This is November 4, Bravo Whiskey Romeo, N4, BWR, Blake and Carrollton. This is... This is WD8LQT, Whiskey Delta 8, Lima, Quebec, Tango, John Fairfield. Good evening, Lee. This is... Any stations, any prefix, please come there. down the list. 
interested in hearing of if people think that some item might substitute to make the, the list a bit smaller, or maybe uh, some redundant items on the list as well that maybe could be removed. So here we go. Naturally, a two meter or dual band HT would be at the top of the list. We're not going to do much good as ham radio operators if we don't have radio with us. Uh, it's recommended you have a copy of your driver's license and current FCC operating license. Uh, replacement antenna, those little rubber duckies that typically come with the radios aren't much better than dummy loads. So uh, make sure you got a good antenna for that HT. Uh, an extra high capacity NICAD or uh, backup battery uh, case. Maybe one that can take alkaline batteries uh, in a pinch uh, and then fit your radio. A DC adapter to run off AP, uh, I'm sorry, AC power. Uh, maybe a car adapter so you can run off the cigarette lighter if necessary. Extra fuses for the power station or charging sources. Uh, in a pinch, sometimes we're in a, in a hurry, and, and naturally that would be a time we'd blow a fuse and then render a charging unit inoperable. So uh, I think that's a really good idea. A speaker mic can be real handy. It gives you some flexibility on where the radio sits and, and gives you a little bit of maneuverability where you're working. Uh, a Swiss Army pocket knife or a Leatherman multi-purpose tool. Most of you who know me, uh, stand by one. Most of you who know me know you will almost never see me without my Leatherman. And a couple of you may remember from field day a couple of years ago, I keep an emergency backup Leatherman in the glove compartment. I'm that uh, impressed with those pieces of hardware. A mini mag light or a flashlight of some sort with an extra bulb and spare batteries. Uh, pencil and uh, pocket notepad, uh, maybe so a little bit of emergency cash. This thing's a little bit dated. It says emergency gas and phone money, and it was a $10 bill and some change. Uh, gas prices are getting low, but that's still not going to get you very far. Uh, an SO239 to BNC or N or whatever type connector that your uh, radio uses so that maybe you can uh, connect a a mag mount antenna to your HT. I don't know how many of y'all have done that, but uh, my first couple of years as a ham radio operator, I had a uh, Kenwood HT sitting in the seat with a cable going out to the roof with a mag mount antenna, and that little five watts it put out did a pretty good job of hitting repeaters in the area for me. Maybe uh, some RG8 jumper cable and some spare connectors or adapters. Spare set of glasses. I always have a spare set of glasses in my car, because uh, otherwise I might be walking in the walls should I break the ones I've got. Uh, Band-aids or moist towelettes and sunscreen. Pocket sewing kit, small pocket compass maybe. Uh, operating reference card for your HT if you're not that familiar with what all those buttons sometimes do. Uh, emergency phone numbers and frequency lists of repeaters. And then others have added to the list, these were add-ons, a bag wash cloth or paper towel towelettes, energy bar, crackers, uh, things like that that you might need to snack on, basic first aid kit, a uh, wrench to turn gas or water on and off, uh, gloves, maybe some safety goggles, and somebody suggested a survival knife because it has a compass, a sewing kit, and various other items that might allow you to remove some of those previous ones on the list. <laughs> So anyway, that's sort of the idea for the everyday bag. Uh, with that, I'd be curious to hear anybody that has any... Uh, well, I'll tell you what, let's do this. Let's go back to late check-ins, and we'll go to the round table. Uh, WX4BK, back to net. Is there any more late check-ins? Please come down. This is... Echo 4, November Indian Alpha, KE4, NIA, Nick from Fairfield. Good evening to everybody on the net.
list of items that hopefully most of you got in an email and had a chance to look at, or maybe you got pretty good memories that I read off here. Uh, keep in mind that every date kit is meant to fit in a you know small waist bag or a small hand carry canvas bag. I uh, want to try to keep the weight down, you know, around five pounds or less if possible. So keeping that in mind, that we're trying to build an efficient little kit for, uh, you know, maybe a sudden incident, something as simple as uh, highway closures or some incident that's affecting traffic that maybe you suddenly decide you need to be able to hit a repeater and you want to have some some tools with you to do it. That's the kind of idea what the everyday bag is. Um, with that, any suggestions for uh, improvements, changes, or just general thoughts on the on the contents we came up with, uh, call now. N four BWR. N four BWR, go ahead, sir. Uh, yeah, I was thinking about that a little bit, and what you s just said uh, maybe kind of rules out this situation, but I was kind of thinking for one thing, it depends on um, your role and if you know like what kind of deployment you're going to have. Um, because I was looking at the longer list and all of the stuff, and I thought, well, me, you know, being on the hospital team, I'm probably going to be going deployed to the hospital, not outside somewhere. So, you know, that would probably throw out the wrenches and gloves and sunscreen. And, um, but, uh, yeah, it would depend on that kind of thing. And then I was also thinking of a couple things I would throw in for myself. I have... Uh, a USB software defined radio. Uh, it's just a receiver, but uh, it's nice and small, and uh, it's probably good for monitoring, you know, amateur radio stuff or public service frequencies uh, without tying up a radio that may also be able to transmit. And also, I would probably throw in the programming cable for my HT. Uh, back to you.
sometimes can be a little tough. Um, and another thing that, that is perishable, some folks don't think about, believe it or not, are things like uh, the band-aids in your port in your first aid kit and the towelettes in the first aid kit. Uh, they are in sealed packages, but I have found that uh, it's easy to forget about them and then realize you've had that kit in the car for three years and and the band-aid stickum isn't there anymore, the towelettes aren't uh, damp anymore, and, and that sort of thing. So that's a very real problem. I wish I had a good answer for that one, but that is something to be cognizant of and, a, and an observation everybody needs to be thinking about if they're going to commit to doing this, that, that there is some rotation and it can be a bit challenging. Uh, I'm really wondering about the water filtration systems to solve your water problem. Okay, uh, anybody else with any questions, comments, uh, thoughts about this topic, please call now. Okay, I uh, do appreciate the participation from those who had some thoughts and for those uh, who uh, may be listening but not ready to throw their two cents in. Next week we're going to talk about the 24-hour bag. That's a longer deployment or maybe one you might want to have if you're stuck on 285 during a snowstorm overnight. Um, so let's, uh, maybe some of y'all take a look at that email for next week, and, uh, and we'll have some thoughts about that one. Before I switch it back for closing the net out, I'll ask if there's anybody else that has any other questions, comments, or uh, information related to the cause. Uh, for the good of the cause, please call now. Okay, we will call it a wrap. Thanks to everyone who participated and checked in tonight. And uh, Lee, I'm going to hand it back over to you. WX4BK, back to that. Is there any late check-ins? Please come now. This is Eno, Eno 4, Eno Arts Town. That's K I 4, K O T Mike, and Anthony, how about the deal? Recognizing KI4, KOT, Brother Mike out of Anderson. Good to hear you tonight, Mike. Back to net. Is there any more late check in? Please come in. Turn to the frequency back to normal limited use. 7-3, everyone.